Every time I see my dad now, who now I'm closer with than ever, he always goes, oh, I'd tell you more, but you're going to go on a podcast and talk about it. <laughs> when I hear Beetlejuice, it's all I think about is that chick like jerking off the right. guy. And but the question is, did Vaping she make the cum or did he make the there cum or did Beetlejuice make the cum? Not today. So we are lucky enough to, because of the life we've lived, we've had some friends in show business. And mm -hmm. when you have friends in show business, you go to a play to see them, or you go to a concert because they're a musician, and you go, and they go, oh, come backstage after. And I always go, ugh. Like, I don't want to go backstage because I don't belong there. Yeah. And the fear is, like, somebody's going to be like, hey, you don't belong here. And then you're like, oh, my God. The I, worst feeling. They, you know, you spotted me. You know I don't belong here, this. Mm -hmm. So we went to see Christina P. at the Mothership, and we go, and they go, come backstage after. So we go backstage after, I turn right into the back room and Tony Hinchcliffe is sitting on the couch mm -hmm. and he pops up so fast, like instantly and starts walking towards me. And I'm like, Tony Hinchcliffe is about to fucking tell us to get out of here. We don't belong here. I'm like, this is going to be so whack. I'm like, why did I do it? I knew I shouldn't do this. Yeah. And the opposite happened. I have never been more excited to hang out with two people like ever, <laughs> ever. Oh. I was in LA for 20 years. I've met all my Literally all my biggest artistic inspirations, Tarantino, Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, all of these monsters. I've met them all. I've been able to manifest absolute and insane life. But you two are so special to me that it is insane. I literally feel like we grew up together, even though we didn't. But it's crazy. I could go on and on and on. But that's we'll, what we're we'll, here for. We'll take turns or something here. Yeah, no, let's but go. I could no. literally Please. just flow. But, so well, let flow. me before you yeah. flow, let me just say like you're just uh, you're the real deal though because you you were so kind. But then we were like you know put it out there like you should come on our podcast you know which is like such a douchey thing to do. Like I I almost hated it when it came out of my mouth. <laughs> but literally, it was less than a week ago, and here yeah. you are. That's so nice of you. Yeah, and I don't even do people's podcasts. I'm sure. I'm not, I don't, it's not even a thing. But but here you only, are. Oh, wait, only on. only when Rogan's. You up, when and, you showed up here, you were like, I've been here five times because I did Danny Brown, I did Dr. Dre, <laughs> right. I did YMH. You well, go. well, well that's a little friends. bit different. But <laughs> yeah, Of course. And it's here, so it's the only thing. And I love Danny, and I never got to hang out with I used the Dr. Drew episode as like an actual doctor, like an yeah, actual yeah, therapy yeah. session. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't you do not do stranger. You don't do people you've known for one day's podcast. It, yeah, ever. Yeah. Exactly. We appreciate right. it. Yes, we do. But I mean, it's absolutely wild because because I always assumed you guys filmed in LA just because actors and actresses or New York or whatever. I never guessed that you guys were here in Texas with us and it's just nuts. I watch The Sopranos, I'm not kidding, and it makes me sound crazy almost every single day of my life. It's what I keep on in the background. It's what I watch if I want to lounge. And it's funny because I literally will like open up Netflix and go, ugh, and I'll open up HBO and see what's new. And and it just it's just right there. Do you want to continue watching that continue yeah, watching yeah. thing in the corner? It's like, you know what? I will watch an episode of The Sopranos 5,000 times before I have any interest in watching anything <laughs> else. And another crazy thing is that I always find something new. That's cool. It's nuts. That David Chase is something else. When Insane. did you first watch it? As soon as it came out. Oh, really? Yeah. So you're like, like our age, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you were like 13 or 14 and you, you were hooked right away. Yes. And was totally relating to it because both of my parents uh, dabbled at when I was younger in organized crime. And so it was the only thing relatable. Youngstown is right between Chicago and New York where, I, where I'm from. And... Um, and it became a huge mafia hub, huge, because wow. the two families would meet there, and Al Capone set up shop there, and a whole bunch of huge crime families. And um, I want to watch a show about your life. I know. You better be making that show. That's exactly what Dr. Drew said when I was in the same spot oh, one time. Wow. Uh, but uh, yeah, so like, not only was it entertaining like it would be for anybody else, but it was literally like the only thing that was anything like 
my family or uh, any th- relating to the things like you know you can't watch like step by step exactly. yeah when they're all like hey Billy right. like what are you yeah and you're right. like no I need to watch people get like shot yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and it was also interesting because my mom was the uh, wasn't the family family mom my mom was the woman on the side in my dad's mafia relationship and she got pregnant with me so you can imagine what that would have done exactly wow boom what a g so so it was not only i mean that's a great for one of your tours or something like tony hinchcliffe yeah son of the gumad yeah exactly right son of the gumad that's a great line absolutely title of the show Yeah. yeah son of the gumad but in italian yeah, how do you say son? Ooh, I don't, I don't know. know. We don't know. We should know, but we don't. Yeah, all oh, Zolo's on it. Nice. But so, like, not only was it relatable to me, it was also kind of like looking in to see what the other family that I didn't know about oh. was doing and what that was wow. like. Wow, you know. So it was Holy kind shit. of just. It was life. It so was everything. So the show is spot on. It was unbelievable. Wow. I mean, it's unbelievable. It was like, I literally feel like I grew up with you guys. And and a lot of the stuff that happens, you know, you in the, it's crazy that you guys, I guess, don't or haven't watched the show. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. I haven't seen like any of it. She watched during COVID. She watched almost all of it, right? I five watched the, um, up to season five. That's absolutely crazy. How do you stop there? I don't know. Uh, I had two kids. I have two kids. No, I know. I got busy. Because you were saying as it got to where like you looked like yourself and an adult, it got harder, right? Yes. Where it was like, yes. oh, because like when you're watching yourself as a kid, you're like, oh, that. But then when you see. Yeah. yeah. You see, for me, a lot of it, it, like there's a lot of reasons I don't watch, but it's like my memory of the show is perfect. Right. Like my, I mean, not that my memory of it is perfect. My, I, I look back on it and I go, oh, that was perfection. Like the people, the time, the, everything was great. And I would hate to ruin my image of it by watching it and being like, oh, I hate this. Why did they use this? I'm doing this. And I hate oh, watching but myself. But you wouldn't. Yeah, and that's the, what the, I thought. It's too. the greatest show of all but time. But I've seen like clips before and I'm like, oh, I, I get so, like even when you're sitting here complimenting the show, even though like I had nothing to do with the show, I feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like it's too... Like, I don't know. I'm I'm used to, like, you know, growing up in New York City where people are like, you're a fucking idiot. And you're like, oh, okay, good. Now I can chill. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, you feel uh, uh, like the co- watching yourself compliment. I don't know. It's, and also, I like that when people ask me about the show, I can say, I don't know. Right. Like you can that. just end the conversation. Yeah. Or just like, I don't have to give them, when they're like, in the season three, episode five, when he said this, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, I don't remember. Yeah. Well, all. see, when easy. I, when I rewatched it for what I watched, I, forgot so much mm-hmm. yeah. so i really enjoyed and i feel like I, I waited 20 years to watch it that i i was able to enjoy it as much as i could as an audience member because there was so much distance and so much had been forgotten that i was it was the first time where i was like oh i get it like i know yeah. everybody said it's the greatest show but like oh i get it it's a really fucking good show oh it's unbelievable and it's really funny yeah it's Hilarious. really funny. It's Tony Sirico's the funniest guy ever. ever. Oh yeah, Tony Polly. What's your favorite episode? Don't. There's so I can't even rank. Well, I mean, actually, I think everybody, all at least like eighty percent of the people that I've talked to would say that the um, <clears throat> Pine Barrens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's just too too good. Tony Sirico and Michael <laughs> Imperioli at their absolute best. fucking best. I don't yes. know what they were doing or what was going on, but it just. It, you feel like you're out there in the freezing cold with them <laughs> when he loses his shoe, when they, they're eating the ketchup packets. Yeah. David Chase just had a way of making you feel like you were there a lot. And I look at all these things. I was watching the other day, and like there's a part where Tony's at a normal appointment, appointment with Dr. Melfi, and they're talking about something deep. And he says something, and the camera's on him, and then it goes to Melfi, who does nothing. And then back to Tony, who does nothing. And then back to Melfi, who does nothing. And then back to Tony, who says something else. And it's like, uh, they're using, uh, he, they used all of these amazing yeah. techniques to make you think that something's about to happen. Yes, and yes, all of this. Yes. And, and they, um, he never tried to make, I think one of the genius things about David is that he never tr- ever tried to make any character look good, sound good be good you know what it was almost like the opposite like he was trying to make you the most human and flawed person that's ever spoken yeah well it's so interesting to find out that um you know 
uh, that they casted so many like normal humans from New Jersey yeah. and everything. Well, Tony yeah. Sirico had done like jail time. Like he was oh, yeah. a legit. And that's like when people say like, I wish I could have met James Gandolfini. I'm like, yeah, you you know, you would have loved him. He's so nice to me. When people say like, I wish I could have met Tony Sirico, I'm like, you did. Yeah. Like yeah, that you watched 80 hours of his life. Like that was him. He was never, we were, so one of my favorite stories about him, we were at a, a charity event one time and there's, I don't know, a hundred tables that like, I think it was at that, where we saw that picture, like the Marriott. Yeah. And there's so many people and there's somebody on stage and they're giving this like heartfelt speech about how many lives you save or whatever. And he sees like five tables over, someone's pouring wine and he starts going like this, like snapping and he's going, oh, oh. And now like slowly, like heads are start turning and they're like looking at him and he's like, oh, and find the person from five tables away. Like somebody gets the person pouring the wine they, he goes like this to come over. They come all the way over. He doesn't say a word to them. He just points at his cup like this, and they start filling it up. And right when it gets like 75% of the way through, he goes like this. And he just turns his <laughs> pinky up oh, like that. Oh, my God. They stop pouring. He takes the cup and just continues to look at the person on stage <laughs> giving a speech. And I was like, everything with him my is the scene from the show. Yeah. My like, favorite. And then at, at, so we would do like the Emmy Awards and the SAG Awards and whatever. He lit up a cigarette in the SAG Awards. At the ceremony, like when they're giving away, yeah. this, all of a sudden in the middle of the room, you just saw a cloud of smoke and he was like smoking a Marlboro Light. Yep. We were the misfits at all of the award shows. Oh, yeah. Always. Hit, always. We stood out like sore thumb. Like, you damn well, you should have. We did. You we were did. America's goddamn fucking Italian children. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And in the show, and since I have to tell you guys this because you're nuts and you haven't watched the greatest show of all time that you guys were on. Uh, Tony Sirico in the show gets arrested and is in prison in Youngstown, Ohio, where I'm from. So that's another connector. And separate from that, he went shot in Italian something, some side independent movie or something in Youngstown. And my dad and some other real, you know, Italians were around and they're excited to be hanging out with Tony Sirico from, you know, uh, uh, Goodfellas yeah. and Soprano. I can't, I don't know if it was before or after Sopranos. But anyway, he goes, does anybody have a Marlboro Light? My dad told me this story. He was there. He goes, does anyone have a Marlboro Light? And some guy's like, I have a Camel Light. He goes, did I fucking ask for a Camel Light? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Yep. That I remember right. I was like, at the point where I was smoking cigarettes with the guys, like, you know, cause at first I was 12 years old and they were treating me like a kid. Yeah. And all of a sudden it was like 15, 16. I started drinking and they're like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know. And then by like 18, 19, 20, it was like, Oh, you're just one of the guys. Like I remember at some age in there was outside and I lit a, a match to light uh, a cigarette. And then I went to like hold it to him and he looked at me like I was banging a dude in the ass. Like, and he looked at me and he goes, he goes, let me tell you something. He goes, a real man always lights his own match. And I've had that in my head oh, yeah. forever. And yeah. I've never heard anyone else say that. Right. I just, I remember that with him. And I remember like, I passed that look on. Yeah. Like, because yeah, there were times where I was 25 and somebody held a match to me. And I'm like, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> like, you know, like, I'm like, are you fucking, like all of a sudden yeah. I'm just like, fuck it. But yeah, I was, I had, I had some oh, morals that were, you know, yeah. Ton he was the best. Yeah. Yeah. Nuts. Do you guys uh, like? Um, do you ever? Do you guys still stay in touch with any of the old yeah. people? Yeah. Do you, do you guys ever talk with David Chase at all in any way, shape, or form? When we shot the commercial, was the first the Super Bowl commercial we did uh -huh. uh, last year? Was it last year? Two years, Two years ago, ago, maybe. Um, was the first that I had seen him in a couple of years. Um, he's very quiet. I'd imagine so. Yeah, it wasn't like. There weren't a lot of conversations. Right. Hey guys. We um we got our first sponsor for YouTube. I don't know, I'm just feeling really overwhelmed and I, I don't know if I'm dealing with it the right way emotionally. But you know boy, I think it helped me with that. That's our sponsor, BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of expanding on what we already are doing right. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. Uh, what therapy helped me with really was just realizing that the problems I had just weren't that unique and um, just basically being told that there are paths forward that have been proven to help people who are going through the same things that 
uh, I was going through, and that immediately felt like a huge weight uh, being lifted off my shoulders. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. And switching therapists anytime for no additional charge is available. Celebrate the progress you've already made. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PAL today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash PAL. What if I asked you to ask him a question? That's impossible, right? We can try. Okay, so here's the question <laughs> that I've wanted to know forever. And again, sorry to any non-Sopranos fans that are watching me Is nerd out right now. Is he the only right guy now. who would know this, you think? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think so. And it's not the stupid, how does it end question. Of course. But something that I noticed is that when uh, Tony goes to kill Tony Blondetto, um, the great and powerful Steve um, Buscemi, Steve Buscemi uh, Van Morrison is playing in the car and over real life. And then we find out that it's in the car as the car is pulling up to the farmhouse where he's hiding out. And Tony kills, Tony Soprano kills his cousin, Tony Blundetto. And Van Morrison is playing. And when Tony Soprano and Christopher Maltesanti, Michael Imperioli, are, and he, Michael's driving the car, uh, which flips and rotates, it's a, a cover of Comfortably Numb from Pink Floyd. But the version that's playing is Roger Waters with... Van Morrison mm. singing David Gilmore's parts. Oh, well, you really do watch the show. Like a freaking, <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a freak. Yeah. I literally watched two episodes while I was, I had nothing to do. The morning, the night that I met you guys, that morning, I literally had nothing to like wake up for. So I was just like rolling around in bed and I had the Sopranos on. and was watching you guys fucking growing up right there in front of me. Anyway, so my question would be, and I'll bet you, I would bet you, because I only really noticed this in the past year or two, and, and it's been bugging the hell out of me. I'll bet you I'm the first person to even make this connection. But for some reason, Van Morrison is playing when Tony kills his cousin Tony and when Tony kills his cousin Christopher. Mm. And I want to know, why did David Chase make it so that Van Morrison is playing? My theory is that he maybe killed a cousin in his actual life, and Van Morrison was playing in the background, or something that close David to that. David actually might have killed a cousin. I'm just kidding, but see, you tell me sometimes that I have too much time on my hands because I always come up with these like weird, fantastical. Yeah. But that's one where it's like, Rob, you having too much time in your hands is asking me who makes cum, the person jerking it or the penis. He's asking Great a question. much deeper question. Right, but I'm saying here he's like I'm the only person that ever noticed about Sopranos. You know what I mean? That's a lot. I agree. Of, I agree. But he has a lot of time know, to think. Which I, I did respect. know that David is was is very into music and very yes. specific, and he he made every decision when it came to the the music that was chosen as for am the I show. obsessed with music all the way through, and the Sopranos as is he, and I know for a fact. It's the only two times that Van Morrison appears in the entire wow. fucking so then series. For sure. You're on to something. So yeah. he, for sure. So and also anybody who doesn't know, the guy who played uh Silvio is little Stevie from Springsteen's E Street Band. Yeah. And like uh Stevie is like a music aficionado. Yeah. He yeah. has a show on Sirius, everything. So he would work with David with yeah. the music. So I don't think anything is a mistake. No. Right. No. Like so there you can't be any coincidences. There. And he's killing his cousin, cousin in yeah. both. It's not like, oh, they're both driving scenes or, oh, they're killing somebody. No. He's literally killing his own cousin at the times in which Van Morrison Brilliant. is playing. I didn't even know that Tony killed Steve Buscemi on the show. What? Oh, right. Until yeah. right now? Yeah. I know that, I know that Tony killed um, uh, Christopher, though. Well, how do you know that? How do I know? Because I remember, like, we all could. So, my, besides the traveling, like, to the shows, my favorite part of doing the show was we would have read throughs. Yeah. And like every wow. two weeks, everybody would sit around. Because that would be would one of the around. only times we would all be together. Right. We'd right. be in like pajamas. Like you show up like this, you sit right. around, they would have sandwiches and fucking sodas and we'd be outside smoking cigarettes and you're bullshitting and you're yeah. talking. And that was when you could, you know, there was no work really involved. You just show up, you have your script in front of you and everybody reads it. And there were people like, you know, uh, 
uh, Lorraine Bracco, where we never had scenes with her, but we were on a show with her for 10 years. Right. So everybody thought like, oh, you must be hanging out with Lorraine all the time. And it's like, we've never been on set at the same time. Right. But you get these times where you spend time together and you hang out. And I remember like, there were certain moments you remember from the read-throughs. And I remember like the eeriness of like, I remember because somebody has to, somebody, you read the lines and then somebody else right. is there and they go, right. Tony holds his mouth over Christopher, Tony holds his hand over Christopher's mouth. Oh my Christopher God. Christopher takes his last breath. And then like turns the page and then you're all sitting and there and the, they're like. And by oh. the end, they, they stopped giving us full scripts right. by the last season or two. And so a lot of the times we would find out at read throughs, like what happens because wow. people so, would leave their script in like their jacket and then right. lose their jacket and then people would be like oh we have the fucking script yeah. from sopranos and whatever thing oh. but and then uh yeah it was it was a lot of it was the fucking the read-throughs were the best the best can i ask you a question yeah did we annoy you as much as fans sometimes tell me like meadow and ag were so fucking annoying <laughs> No, really? There's, you can be honest. These, that's because these that people was nowadays. These, well, yeah, but these people they complain we about just anything job, nowadays. Guys. But even when the show was just airing, they no, hate it. And hate I understand it. why you hate my character, but I feel like for you it would be less likely because that was you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're like, oh, I can't. Yeah, was there shit that happened? I mean, I'm Anthony. That's it, what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Can, you're not gonna be like every, I hate that. Every kid. Tony is an Anthony. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and my dad's. I mean, stupid, but my dad's middle name was Anthony. His father was an Anthony. So I'm technically almost a fucking Anthony Junior. Junior. Right. Wow. And the same exact age as you. We're like a year apart. Yeah. Wow. So I'm watching. Holy shit. Yeah. Yeah. But now, not annoying. If anybody was annoying. I, I, there wasn't. Everybody plays their role so well. I'm a fan of like villains. So the people that were annoying were supposed to be annoying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Somebody who were I'm great. still really close with is uh, who I talked to a lot is Vince Caratola, who played Johnny Sack, and he's yeah. just like, he's so fucking good. Yeah, he's, he's so, so good. he's so good. And the way just ever even he's an actor in real life. Like when we're you know we go out to dinner and just the things that he does are just so fucking. Everyone was very unique. Yeah. Very specific and unique. Yes. Well, I mean, I know it's 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 hard to say this in a world where everybody diversity is everything and this and that, but Italians are the fucking best. Sorry to say it. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you, haters. You know what too though, when I went back <laughs> when I went back watching the show, especially now in the world that we live in and cancel culture and everybody being so careful about what they say and look. In many ways, I understand we need to bring certain things to light and I'm in support of that. But like we were portraying and depicting people and the way they speak and the way they think. And people are so afraid to do that anymore. Yeah. And that's shitty. Right. Like when I rewatched it, I was like, oh, my God, nobody would make this show anymore. Nobody. Oh, yeah. People will be so afraid. But this is how these people think and speak and talk. And there's nothing wrong with representing that. Mm -hmm. I know it was, a, it was a different era. I mean, you yeah. can't you cannot be that creative anymore. No, I always call it the Beetlejuice effect. Like they couldn't make the Beetlejuice now. No, there's right. they would be so watered down by executives. They would go, why would anybody be interested? That in, congresswoman uh, would be jerking right. somebody off. Yeah, in it. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah, you know the congresswoman who jerked someone off at the Beetlejuice show. Oh, I gotta rewatch Beetlejuice. Nancy oh, Bobert or yeah. some shit. Right, she, like, Lauren jerked, Bobert. Lauren yeah. Bobert. She jerked some guy off in at, the like, movie. No. I, it was like a play of <laughs> yeah. Beetlejuice. Oh, you took my. Oh, yeah. I was talking about the I was movie, like, but I don't remember no, that I know, part. Anytime there's a chance to add someone getting jerked off, I'm catching on to your Probably. style. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have to because that the, one I hear Beetlejuice. That's all I think about is that chick like jerking off right. the guy. Oh, and but the question is, did she make the cum or did he make the cum or did Beetlejuice make the cum? Because technically, it's, he inspired that it. That is Beetlejuice mm. is a good word for cum. Wow. We're wow. back here again, aren't we? <laughs> Don't say it three times, Jamie. <laughs> You'll know what's gonna happen. Were there was so was there shit that happened in your life and you were like and then you saw it on Sopranos and you were like, that's exactly Well, I there was a I had a teacher back in the day, um, Mr. Gil Martin. I'm pretty sure he's dead now, so I can talk about this. Um <laughs> R.I.P. But I was making a joke, because I was, as you can imagine, an insane class clown, nonstop always in trouble, always signing a conduct card, everything, every fucking day. And so the teachers hated me. And Mr. Mr. Gil Martin really hated me. He felt like he wanted to teach me a lesson. So anyway, one day I was making a joke, a blatant joke with all my buddies <laughs> about, yeah, my dad jerked me off the other night, something like that. 
And he goes, oh, he did? I go, no, I'm kidding. He goes, no, you know what? You said that. You're going to learn today, my buddy. And so he goes to the principal and says, Tony made a, well, he didn't, I think he said, I don't know if he said that I made a joke about it. But anyway, he goes, Tony said that his dad jerked him off. Uh, we have to call children's <gasps> services. And let me remind you, my dad and me, we were, it was a secret thing. Like I wasn't supposed <laughs> to go around, going, go around town and tell people who my dad was or off? anything like that. Right. Well, that either. <laughs> But it was, you know, I was the secret and I was fine with that. It, it you know, probably psychologically affected me a little bit being a that secret he, that kid. That he wasn't your dad or that he was in the moth of, of well, crime syndicate? He, well, he was in that and that, but it was like a secret kind of. It wasn't like my dad is blah, blah, blah. Right. Wow. Yeah, I have yeah. a different last name than my dad. I took oh, the last shit. name of the husband that was my mom wanted me to have the same name as my brothers and sisters that were much older than me but with the different dad that she wow. was married to even though they weren't whatever um you know you just didn't get divorced back then i'm sure you yeah. guys have heard about yeah. this yeah, yeah. like you just lived in we're you just age. had separate <laughs> bedrooms but right. you didn't get divorced and my dad was going through the same thing separate bedrooms from his wife and just banging my mom for 11 years, by the way, until I was made. So they had like a super secret wow. romance. Anyway, so Mr. Gilmartin wanted to make a fucking stink, not realizing what he was dealing with. So he has the principal call Children's Services. They track down who my dad was and call him. And, uh, you know, <laughs> my dad basically is like, I'm sure he was making a fucking joke. What are you guys <laughs> talking about? But this Mr. Gilmartin applied the pressure, blah, 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 blah. Long story short, I, uh, <laughs> oh man, it's crazy. But he wasn't a teacher there much longer. And uh, my mom and I are at the grocery store a few months later, and he's stacking uh, cantaloupes in the produce section of the grocery store, his new job wearing the apron and not seeming happy. And it's very much like the, uh, again, I can't believe you guys haven't seen the fucking show. Yeah. But uh, there, the, there's a guy that gave yes. uh, um, Tony a ticket and he ends up working in like a gardening. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. yes. Whoa. And you wow. see the guy. Can, and you can I give feel you my guilty. picture and resume to play your mom in the show? Like, yeah. oh my God, this is crazy. Oh, it goes on and on and on. So That's you, just the first one I thought of. I mean, if I sat down I'm and really sure. thought about it, I could go on and on and on. You, uh, your character, like figuring it out and you telling him, like, you don't know. I have an older sister who literally had that conversation with me. Like, you're, you can't talk about it. It's a thing. Oh, wow. It's our own thing. You can talk with me about it, but you can't talk with other people about it. But yeah, your dad makes money doing illegal things. It's gambling. And, and, and just like you do, it's like you're not blowing it up. It's normal to right. us. It's like it's just what everybody else is doing in their jobs and businesses. But, you know, it's technically illegal. It's just a government scam so that they can blah, blah, blah. Like <laughs> yeah. it's, it's yeah. literally you, your perspective. Um, did you, know? you ever go like, is this show based off of us? Like, did you ever think like, is this is this us? Like, did you ask your dad or anybody like... Yeah, but they always downplay it, just like on the show, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, no, I don't do that, blah, blah, blah. I told this story on uh, on your mom's house because when I first did your mom's house with Tom and Christina, you guys will appreciate this, I literally, for some reason, because I'm a stoner and I don't listen to anybody's podcasts, I thought it was about, I thought if you went on there, you were supposed to talk about your mom. <laughs> right. So I talked about my mom. We ended up, it ended up being just a, a massive, like, this was like seven years ago, but it was like a big deal back then. People are like, you're, you know, Gina, this and that, because I was telling them little mob stories because my mom ran numbers. That was like her child support. So instead of my dad, like giving her money, he let her run an entire, <laughs> an entire branch. Shit. Yeah. An entire branch of the, of the thing running numbers. So it's like an illegal yeah. lottery, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, so, it ended up being like this hit thing where people are like, because um, we asked my mom, we ended up calling into my, my mom called in the second time I did the show. And Tom goes, so let's just say, 
and she's a sweet old lady now. She's out of the business. She's 76. <laughs> so like I've taken it upon myself to kind of vent this thing, even though every time I see my dad now, who now I'm closer with than ever, he always goes, oh, I tell you more, but you're going to go on a podcast and talk about it. <laughs> but anyway, it's the last time uh, that, um, well, a few Anyway, when my mom called in on your mom's house the second time that I did it, because she was like a hit by that point, Tom goes, so what if I didn't have the money for you like on the due date? Like, uh, let's say the due date's Tuesday. So let's go through it on the phone call. Let's let's make believe. She goes, OK, <laughs> let's do it. He goes, hey, uh, Gina, I don't have the money. Um, uh, I won't have the money for you on Tuesday, but I'll have it for you on Wednesday. And there's like this like long five second pause. And she goes. There's no such thing as Wednesday. And they fucking oh my God, lose I just got their chills. minds. Yeah. Oh, she's such wow. a badass. There's no such thing as Wednesday. But anyway, talking about wow. how things are relatable, <laughs> I the uh, also on that episode, I talked about how um, my dad told me that he was out, out completely. I talked with him that night at his restaurant. This is years ago. And he goes, I don't even do any of that stuff anymore. That's all. That's all. That was back in the day and it was nothing. There's nothing going on. And on cue, this is a true fucking story. And Red Band and a couple of my old podcast buddies were there when this happened. A guy walks in with a newspaper and literally goes the new, really good news today really good news today and you can see <laughs> the money of cash hanging out of the end of this wow. rolled up newspaper you just stacks of cash through it rolled bundled up and hanging out of the end the news was good today it's like oh yeah you're totally out totally wow. a totally a legal first, operation do you remember the first time you sniffed something that you were like my family's something's going on something's different well what's crazy is that i found out really really early on they lied for a long time like up until maybe when i was i can't remember the exact seven eight nine ten somewhere in there they lied they said that my dad just worked a lot that's why he only visited once a month or twice a month or whatever and then um i noticed my, when my um school bus would uh pick up my one buddy jeff lewis across the street i noticed a car that looked a lot like my dad's car that i would be waiting for and excited to see when he would come visit and then and it's crazy because i was so young we'll just say 10 which was like the old side of but it was it may have been earlier I matched the license plate. I memorized his license plate or at least the first couple letters or whatever from when I saw it. Cause I'm like, I want to see, cause that looks a lot like the car across the street from Jeff's house. So I matched the license plate up <clears throat> and um, I confronted my mom with it one day after school. I go, you know, um, I noticed that dad's car is parked directly across the street from Jeff Lewis's house. And she knew that my dad wasn't a truck driver or whatever they told me up until that point. Uh, she knew that he lived about eight blocks away, you know, dick, 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 right across from Jeff Lewis. And she goes, okay, all right, we're going to have a talk. And she called up Lori, my older sister, and it was the two of them and me in my mom's bedroom. She's posted up, sitting up. At a you know 90 degree angle on the bed, Lori in the chair over there, me on this little bench at the end of the bed, and to their credit, uh, they explained everything to me. Perhaps it was too young for it to happen, perhaps it was too late, but they basically explained like, okay, so everything we told you was a lie. You were Italian, you know, you're super Italian, and here's how this culture works. Your dad was married, I was technically married, but we weren't in love with the people that we were married to. And sometimes this happens and that happens, but he's connected with some things, you know. They tried to, like, you know, it was a lot, yeah. but I, like, didn't, I didn't fully get it, but they explained it to me young. They're like, okay, let's just go all the way honest. That was her plan. Which is, I guess, was I like good. It. Yeah, I like it. The show is like life for me because it really is a comedy. The Sopranos yeah. is a drama disguised, or it's a comedy disguised as a drama. Yeah. It's hysterical. The entire every every part of it. 
Like there's not and an because episode. Because we shot where... it like a drama. Yeah. I think that's why it you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we we there was never an ounce of us ever trying to be funny. Right. And with my stand up, as corny as this sounds, it's kind of like the same thing. You know, you it's the Sopranos and Tarantino is the artwork in my plays. It's the uh it's kind of like my, not brand, but it's just my Your sense vibe. of humor because it's serious, 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 which disguises the punches. So you don't, so when something funny happens, which, you know, these Tarantino films are hilarious, yeah. right? But it's, but I mean, Casino, meanwhile. good for all, like, I mean, exactly. Goodfellas is all fucking hilarious. hilarious. But then there are, what's crazy is there's people who watch Joe Pesci kicking the guy on the floor and you're laughing with your boys and yeah. there's some people who are like why are you laughing right. like this is so crazy and they do, yeah. it's it's wild that you yeah. get you're watching the scene and people get completely mm -hmm. different things from it and the best is always in my opinion you know disguised like that it's uh you know hidden you don't see yeah. it coming it's serious 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 boom and those are the best laughs because you know it's it surprises you Sometimes we forget that laughter is like a surprise emotion. Something can be really funny and it, and it doesn't make you laugh. You're just like, God, that's hilarious. That's why grandmas are the funniest and grandpas like right. that. Right. Like grandpas yep. are the funniest not people trying. in the fucking world yeah. because yeah. it's always like, you know, that fucking shock. Mm -hmm. That's right. But, like I love Donnie Brasco. Like love. Like I think it's one of the best. And I think the reason I like it is because it doesn't glamorize being in the mafia. You know what I mean? Like they show the guy who's like, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to pay the bills, but he's like, you know, doing all this shit. So I wanted to know, like, what what was like the non glamorous side of it? like living that lifestyle? Were there times where you were like, yo, this like the bad parts? Well, really, a lot of it, because the the difference between my life and the Sopranos was that Tony Soprano was making, I think, a lot more money than um, you know my family was. A, a lot of the mafia, especially in the era that I was growing up in because the FBI was clamping down because it was b being glamorized by Goodfellas, by The Sopranos, by so many things. So they were really, um, you know, cracking down on it and just regular street crime was taking over. So we weren't rich. That's the thing. Like I was kind of jealous of you guys when you got a new Pathfinder or <laughs> you like had these things because it's like, man, I never, my, my dad never had somebody so in debt that he got their Pathfinder or whatever it was, the little right. yellow Nissan or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, it wasn't that glamorous, but the things that ran true were the food was amazing. It was, you know, a little bit more exciting, you know, some months were better than others. Mm -hmm. Some days the news was good, you know? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but it, it wasn't anything like, it was more like that, you know, that it was yeah. real. Yeah. It was gritty. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't that, we weren't rich at all, not even remotely close. My mom always made sure that I had new shoes and that we had HBO for some reason. I'd never really figured that out, but thank <laughs> God. Priorities. Yeah. My grandmother would order HBO the day before Soprano started and cancel it the day. She, and she was so like uptight about it that like, the second the finale ended, like she wouldn't call someone and be like, can you believe this? She would go right, be waiting right for the phone to call up <laughs> to, to cancel off. HBO. Yeah. yeah, amazing. What did, what did you think the ending was? Well, I mean, I'm pretty positive of it. I, I mean, it's not, it's not great. I don't think, yeah. I think it was, you know, as scary as it seems. I think it kind of puts a ribbon on everything that family and, everything was such a big part of the show him trying to solve his problems him trying to keep it away from the kids it's a scary thought to think that it ends with him getting shot in the head in front of his family by some you know retaliation yeah. of someone or something but uh it's definitely what it seems like the I way agree. that it's shot and the trickiness of it the guy and the gun in the bathroom theory makes all the sense in the world and it's kind of sad to think about but why else wouldn't they show us you know you can't show that scene obviously you Never. can't show you two covered in blood and Carmela losing her fucking mind. See, um, I disagree. I think that's what everyone wanted to see, and that's why David didn't show it. Like, I but think, I think that's what happened. Right, 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 right. But I'm saying David constantly would say, like, he doesn't want to give the people. Like, if everybody's like, "Where's the Russian guy? Where's the Russian guy?" He's like, "I'm not gonna answer." Like, mm -hmm. whatever they want. And then once people stop asking about him, then I would do it. And I think 
everybody wanted to see Tony, like, wanted an answer. They wanted right. to see Tony get killed. They And like you said, the it was 15 years ago, 20 years ago, where they would show it if they, right. I mean, they showed a guy get his head run over by a fucking yeah. car. Like, I think they easily would have showed it, but I just think, I also think that David wasn't sure that he was fully ending it. Right. But I think now he's come to that conclusion. Yeah. I don't well, think, I don't yeah. think that it was necessarily over when it was over. Yeah. You know, I think they wanted to leave it open. I think it's brilliant no matter what. No it matter was. what. Yeah. 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 Any, any yeah. way you slice it, it's, it's genius. And I would have loved to have seen um, Carmela's reaction to that Edie Falco. She in that show, I mean, yeah. again, you guys haven't seen it, so it's nuts. But like when Tony's in the hospital and the doctor, you know what I'm talking about? And the doctor goes, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll just see. Uh, and she has this crying scene by herself that it's one of the only, I think it is the only thing in all of cinema or television history that like if i stare right at it while it's happening it Makes just absolutely yeah. it's nuts it yeah. is she's a 10 out of 10 oh my yeah. like there's God. no yeah. yeah it's unbelievable she effortlessly embodies and the i story. mean it's like it's it, it's daniel day lewis it's uh um, gary oldman esque like and i don't even know if they're i don't know if i know of another um female that in the history of yeah. my life that has moved me the way that she does wow. in that show wow powerful yeah. stuff yeah well listen thank you we appreciate yeah, you this coming yeah. so much so awesome. and you're always welcome i love it we'll do we'll do more let's here. do more uh, absolutely whenever you want to come we'll come see you, you probably with, yeah. made so many people happy that you made us talk about it so much but heck yeah like yeah yeah, yeah. Thanks well, for giving it a five star review. My pleasure. <laughs> you guys are my long lost brother and sister that uh, I, I haven't gotten to meet before. So <laughs> yeah. well, exciting stuff. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys uh, soon. See you next time.